king throughout all eternity asking him for saving grace also victory in the race and to help us by his power to keep holy every hour. Yes, the holy Sabbath rest by our God divinely blessed. It to us a sign shall be throughout all eternity. That's a beautiful song. It's the blessed Sabbath day of rest. And I say happy Sabbath to everybody. This morning, I want to share with you a text and a little exhortation that I have for you this morning. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. As I read this text this in preparation for this morning, something came to my mind and I wish to share that with you this morning. Isaiah 43 and verse 2 says from the New Living Translation, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulties, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned. The flames will not consume you, Isaiah 43 and verse 2. I have always used this text to support me when I am met with difficult situations. The assurance, when you go through the rivers of difficulties, you will not drown, is very comforting. However, I was faced with a question from a person who was really grieving deeply. The question is this, why are we not seeing the miraculous deliverance like in the New Testament time when persons pray, fast and pray, they see instant result. The person has lost a loved one. And obviously, that was really what was upon her mind at this time. I understood her grief. And I tried to find answers toward that question. I did share something with her. But after that, I came home and I started searching. And I found a book written by um, Bill Knott. He's the editor of the, or was the editor of the Adventist Review. And he said this, what happened when the river bed doesn't dry up at the moment you stepped in? When the water reaches your knee, your waist, and even your neck? What happened in those hours when the logics of a God-given mind seems in conflict with the calling of a God-given fate. If every lost kitten suddenly appeared each time you prayed, or every lost soul made a dramatic U-turn because you asked the Lord to change a heart, we would soon regard the miracles of God as commonplace and something we deserve. God's word repeatedly reminds us that faith is never a vending machine transaction in which a coin is deposit require a product delivered. In the end, it is not things, not even miracle that we need, most need, 
but the relationship with a miraculous, gracious God. The goal of faith is always larger than the great things faith accomplish, like the building built, the sermon preached, the cup of water given. Faith is experience of learning deeper trust and arriving at an unshaken confidence that we are always and eternally safe because we are in his hand. So this morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to assure you, no matter your situation, and I have, you know, some things that have come to my attention, some of the, the suffering and the challenges that our brothers and sisters are going through, or even those who are not related to the faith, but they are human beings. And the people are challenged, wondering, when you see dead bodies being piled up, trench being dug, you can't even claim your loved ones. People ask the question, where is God? But I want to assure you this morning as we come to pray and give our testimony that God is right there with you. And he is he's asking us to trust him. Even when we cannot see, nobody can see this virus with your naked eyes, but it is wreaking havoc. You may not be able to reach out and hold God in your hands, but I want to assure you that he is there. And as tangible as this pen that I have in my hand, God is with you. I want you to hold on to him this morning. May God bless you. Let me just share a prayer. Father God, I thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. I thank you this morning, O oh God, for the assurance that you are with us in spite of our challenges. We give you thanks this morning for all those who have joined us for this brief worship this morning. And we pray, God, that you will surround them with your love, your mercy, and your protecting hand. Give them courage amid despair. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ramon, you can give us a few of those bright for points. medical professionals and hospitals in the area that are struggling with a shortage of medical supplies, pray that God would provide what is needed so our health professionals can stay safe. Pray that more people can help making masks and other protective equipment and that needed beds, ventilators, and health facilities would be open to accommodate the surge in medical care needed. Pray for the Chinese ministry in Cebu City in the Philippines. Pray for protection from the coronavirus for the church there, and that more Chinese people will take active interest in the study. And I want to give you the opportunity to just share a testimony. Basically, we are saying this morning as we go, um, what... Um, what do you want to praise God for? Just basically a minute. I just want you to say, what is it that you want to praise God for this morning? Just take a minute. Uh, Ramon will monitor your mic. You could raise your hand if you wish to speak. And um, we will get your part. Just what is it that you want to praise God for this morning, in spite of everything that is going on around you? Let's go. Just want to give God the praise. I just want to give God the honor and the glory. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank God the fact that I I I can breathe. Mm -hmm. uh, so many persons have have, have lost their life. Mm -hmm. They 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 are tormented. They are they are not in their right mind. Many persons are, are uncomfortable right now. But just the fact that we are alive, just the fact that 
we are in our right minds, just the fact that we can still gather together. Uh, that, that's a thrilling thing for me and my family. The fact that we can just still worship online. So I just want to give God all the glory and all the praise and all the honor this morning. And Lord, I just want to thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for food. Thank you for shelter. Thank you for, for what you have been doing to us as a body of the church. I just want to give you all the glory and all the praise. Mm -hmm. I just want to shout out your name continuously and to say, God, you are God in spite of what is happening. And I just want to hold on onto your hand and to trust you and to believe you in spite that we can't figure out what is going to happen, but knowing that my Redeemer liveth, I can, I can hold on unto the anchor in spite of the storm. So just Lord God, I just want to give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Who is next? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I just want to give God thanks this morning for his blessing and for health. I thank him a peace of mind. I thank him for a peace of mind, even in this situation. Thank him for all my fam my husband, my family, my uh, all my, you know, everyone is still here. I give God glory for that. Thank him for my church family that we can, you know, call and encourage each other and still have these, um, these meetings going on to encourage one another. I just thank God for his blessing each day that he has given to, to me. And I give glory and, and praise to him because he's truly good to me and to all of us. Good morning. I would like to give God praise this morning for his grace and his mercy, for waking me up and clothing me in my right mind, for keeping me safe, my family safe. I'm thanking him for his protection over my children who are in the front line of helping people this morning. I'm just giving him praise and thanks because he's a God of God. And he is our deliverer, our shield, and our buckler. And I'm praising him this morning for all that he has done for us and what he will continue to do for us and keeping us strong in this time that we realize that he is God and to take away fear and doubt from us and just keep us strong in him. Just thanking him and praising him for all my family, my church family, that we can all be together in unity and to look for his return. This morning. Pleasant. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Sister Mackenzie, praise God. I just Lord. want to magnify Almighty God this morning for mm -hmm. Him sitting exactly where He at this morning, Amen. and He is with each one of us, mm -hmm. no matter what is going on. Just to know. Mm -hmm. that he is interceding for us this morning. I say marvelous are his work toward us. Day by day, we can lean on him. We can depend on him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. My friend decided that she wanted to say a word for 
call God this morning and enemy attack her last night. She had a miserable night, but we say, God, you are in full control. The work has already been done. Mm -hmm. And we are so glad to be in the land of the living this morning to declare the mighty power of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Even though the world is in turmoil, we have peace because he promises peace. And even though many persons are in the fire, we know that he is in the fire with us. This is the time when we got a hold like we've never held before. Mm -hmm. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Saints, mighty, mighty, mighty is our God. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of his father this morning. Mm -hmm. And he is taking note. Yes. He say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A thousand will fall at our right hand, ten thousand at our left, we will not be able to come nigh our dwelling. Since we that seek it, we, we who are in the secret place of the Most High, we shall abide under His mighty wings. Let's be encouraged. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Do we have one more person? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sister Roll. I too must give God thanks for what he has done for me. I thank him for his grace and for his mercy. Thank him for health and for strength. And I give him thanks for those that are on the front line who are still Sometimes they are scared, but I thank God that you have given them the strength. I have a grandson, a daughter, and a husband who is on the front line. And sometimes I'm scared, but I pray and I ask God to give me the strength to go on. And I also thank God for family and friends, for church members who have called me and encouraged me and tell me to hold on, never to give up. So God is so good. I, you know, sometimes I'm so nervous. Even my daughter-in-law, she's one of who drive the ambulance. And it's very scary. But I give in God thanks. And I ask you all to continue and to pray for me so I could hold on and have the strength to go on. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I just feel like somebody else out there want to, I don't want to deny you. I'm taking a little liberty this morning. Um, there's somebody else. Okay, if nobody else wants to. Okay, it's a turn quest. Go ahead. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I just want to give God thanks for health and strength and the ability to still be alive during this time. I am grateful that we still have persons who are able to go on the front line and we have healthcare professionals and healthcare workers who are going out there and still helping the wounded and afflicted. And I just pray that this will end sooner than later. And I thank him even during this time, we still have family and friends, especially church family too, where we can come and still worship and praise God and encourage each other. So I pray that we still be, continue to be of encouragement and a strong tower for one another. Amen. Amen. Sister Serenquist, I'm happy for all those who join in, but I'm especially happy for a younger person really tuning in and giving her testimony this morning. We're indeed happy to have morning. Right. I just want to give you thanks and praise for your grace, for your mercy, for all that you have done for your people and continue to do for your people. We praise you, I present before you this morning, Father, those 
who are on the front line helping persons who are inflicted by this terrible disease. Oh God, when I listen to the testimonies of the ER doctor, the respiratory therapist, the nurses, and they give an account of the human toll, the loss of life, the pain, not only the physical pain, but the emotional pain that these individuals are going through. Oh God, please stand by your people. I'm happy this morning, oh God, that as I listen to the news, that there seems to be a break in the ranks. So, oh God, you are answering our prayers. You are still at work. Jesus. So I pray this morning, Father, that you will continue to be with us. Continue to hear the cry of your people. Be with this lady now. She had a rough night last night. I just forget her name. I'm out of the United States. God, put a hand on her this morning, oh God. Virus cannot affect you. Reach down there, minister to her. She's reaching up in faith to you this morning. So I pray, God, that you will reach out and minister to her this morning. Heal her, oh God. Miracle still works. Heal in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, reach down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister to the needs of your people. We bless you, Jesus. In the name of Christ, we pray. Yes, Jesus. Amen. And amen. Amen. God, Lord God, Jehovah. We thank you today. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the ending. You are altogether lovely God. You are the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. We approach you now, O God. And with Paul, we don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray as I ought to, but I'm calling for the aid of the Holy Spirit with the total awareness of my unworthiness, God, my lack of merit, because there is not any goodness in us human beings. The best of our obediency is as filthy rags, and, and my condition is even worse than that, God. But I still come this morning, just as I am, because you and your word bids us come to you Lord, you said in Isaiah 118, come and let us reason together. Though your, our sins be a scarlet, you'll make them white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And so thank you, God, for the promise made. And every promise you made is a promise kept. And we claim this cleansing through the efficacious blood of Jesus. You said, when you see the blood, you will pass over. You will forgive our sins. You will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God, we claim that today as we approach your awesome throne of grace. These 100 days of prayer and fasting, oh God, should have been propelling us for to participate in the general conference sessions. Rather, however, your judgments, O oh God, are in the lands all over this world. And we have many of those countries, O oh God, in, in Italy, in, in the United States, God, in India, around uh, the world, where the casualty rate is mushrooming and zooming. But God, today we are calling on you. The death angel is in flight. This COVID-19 pandemic is stalking our world. But thank you, God, you are still our shelter in the time of storm. You are still our present help in time of trouble. So come to our rescue. God, the one question I have is, is this a wake-up call to us, your people? Have we 
as your remnant church been sleeping like the ten virgins? And is this an attempt, God, if to wake us up and to get us prepared to meet you in the clouds of heaven? As a people, God, your remnant church, do we have oil in our lamps? Are they or are they going out? It is especially in this regard that I bring your church before you, your people before you, your remnant people. What if this pandemic were to precipitate the trumpet sound when the dead in Christ will rise first and those who are alive and remain were caught up together to meet the Lord in the air? Are our lambs filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit? Are we ready to go forth to meet the bridegrooms with our lambs trimmed and burning? Yes, but I thank you, God, for yet another opportunity to check our lamps, our lives, and for affording us another opportunity to be filled with the Spirit, I pray, and I claim this in filling for our world president, Ted Wilson, God. I plead and I pray for this in filling for his administrators and his colleagues in the general conference. I pray and I claim this infilling of oil, the Holy Spirit, for our division leaders, our presidents and administrators and our departmental directors. I claim and I pray, O oh God, for this infilling of your Holy Spirit for our union presidents around the world, for our conference presidents and the administrators around the world. I lift up, I zoom in on South Bahamas conference leaders, Elder Kenny DeVoe, our president, God, I lift them up to you, Elder Leonardo Reming, our secretary, I lift them up to you, Mr. Kimberly Bryan, our chief financial officer, I lift up to you, God. These are our leaders and they need your hand of blessing and protection, not only temporarily, God, but spiritually. I pray that you will purge them with hyssop, cleanse them in and out, fill them with your spirit so that they could be the spiritual leaders you want them to be. be. Remember, our departmental directors of this South Bama Conference, our pastors, our church elders, our officers, every church member, God, this is a time to search ourselves. This is a time for fresh and filling. And God, I just pray that you will do that for us while the world is all caught up with the pandemic. God, help us to be caught up with the need to be filled with your spirit. We long for Jesus to come. Yes, even but even the original apostles of Jesus could not get the job done until they took time to be filled with the Spirit of God. Jesus told them, don't leave the Jerusalem, don't go anywhere until you are filled with the Spirit, until you endured with power. We worry, we plan and 